the untold story of the Coast Guard sand pounders. One of the lesser known heroes during World War II was a branch of the US Coast Guard often referred to as the sand pounders. The mounted soldiers were responsible for patrolling the shores of the US and keeping the coast safe and prepared for any possible threats. And at the time, there were many threats out there. In today's video, we will discuss everything that we know about the sand pounders and how they efficiently kept the United States safe during a time when almost everyone was afraid. Going back as far as 1871, American beaches have been patrolled, whether on foot or on horseback. But before the responsibility fell onto the Coast Guard, it belonged to its predecessor, the Life Saving Service. And in 1915, when the Life Saving Service merged with the Revenue Cutter Service to form the Coast Guard, they continued their beach patrols. This became particularly important for the country during the 1940s, while they were in the middle of the Second World War. Many people living in the United States during World War II didn't realize that the war was much closer to the country than most people thought. Just off the Atlantic coast, there were active German U-boats that began causing a problem for various other vessels, such as cargo ships and even fishing boats. Those who lived near the coastlines were aware of the danger that they faced, and therefore the idea of mounted beach patrols made by the Coast Guard became more and more important. The concept of the mounted beach patrol, also known as the sand pounders, was to make it easier for the members of the patrol unit to get their job done. On horseback, they would not only be able to carry more equipment around with them, but they would also be able to cover more ground and pursue possible suspects much more efficiently. This was important because at the end of the day, the mounted beach patrol had three main focuses that needed to be taken seriously. First, they needed to be on the lookout for any suspicious ships off the coast or on the horizon. Their next priority was to report and, if possible, prevent any enemies from landing on US soil, or in this case, sand. And lastly, they were responsible for stopping all communication happening between foreign ships and people on the shore. When it came to patrolling, the mounted patrol unit often worked in pairs and sometimes would even include a dog. The pads on the dog's feet were covered with shoes made out of canvas material to ensure that they didn't get injured by broken shells while walking up and down the beach. Believe it or not though, not every beach or coastline was patrolled by sand pounders. It really depended on whether or not the environment was suitable for a unit. For instance, the northernmost territories like New England didn't have many beach patrols because the beaches weren't suitable and the harsh winters made the areas practically inhospitable. You were more likely to run into the cavalrymen on the mid-Atlantic coastline of the US. The weather was much more suitable all year round. There were also notable patrols that worked along the Texas coast and in Oregon. Now, it's important to note that the Sand Pounders were not a massive military unit while they did have their numbers, they were never expected to be able to repel a full-scale invasion from the sea. They were created as more of a preventative measure to provide some semblance of safety to the people living along the coast. And their position in the Coast Guard was taken even more seriously than ever following the attack on Pearl Harbor. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese Navy Air Service launched a surprise military strike on the United States Naval Base at Pearl Harbor. The attack occurred just before 8 a.m. that day, leading to a total of 2,335 deaths. And when the war was officially at their shores, the Coast Guard amped up their precautions. The Mounted Beach Patrol began working alongside the Dog Training Center in Hilton Head, South Carolina, and began taking action. The military started calling for anyone who was an experienced horseback rider and wanted to serve their country. They wanted anybody that claimed they could handle a horse to become a member of the Sand Pounders. This applied to jockeys, stunt riders, show jumpers, rodeo riders and more. This was a good opportunity for some experienced riders because you didn't even have to supply your own equipment or horse. All of the horses that were involved came from the Army Remount Service and the US Army. The Army would also provide the riders with their gear and riding equipment. Meanwhile, the Coast Guard would provide the uniforms to anyone who chose to volunteer. The cavalry men would then be sent off to train at Elkins Park Training Station in Pennsylvania, and those who were going to be working with dogs in their unit were sent to South Carolina to train at Hilton Head. In less than a year after the attack on Pearl Harbor, there were already 3,000 horses assigned to the Sand Pounders, along with radios, rifles and more. All of them were easily carried by the horses and they were still able to catch up to the suspects much faster than any patrolman on foot. Since the unit was created, Mounted Beach Patrol members have been responsible for stopping various attempted attacks on US soil that took place during World War II. Two of the most notable instances happened in tandem with one another 
started a little while after midnight on June the 13th, 1942. A German U-boat was transporting a strike team consisting of four German soldiers, all dressed in uniform and equipped with enough explosives and other gear to last them for what many believe was supposed to be a two-year period of terrorist attacks. After landing ashore, the group quickly discarded their uniforms by burying them in a shallow enough spot to dig them back up and retrieve them at a later time. However, they didn't get to finish burying their uniforms and putting on civilian clothes before a mounted patrolman approached them. He was suspicious of the men, but he was alone and unarmed, so when they offered him a bribe to forget that he saw them, he quickly agreed. However, he did so with the intention of reporting the incident to his headquarters, which he did. Though the saboteurs managed to get out of the area before being apprehended, because there was a report placed and people were on the lookout, all four of the men were arrested before long. Before all of the men could be arrested, though, another team of four German soldiers was dropped off by a German U-boat at Ponte Verdra Beach, just south of Jacksonville, Florida. Thankfully, because the Sand Pounders were patrolling the area and knew about the team's landing, all eight men were apprehended by June 27th of the same year, before any of the attacks were completed. In July of that same year, the Coast Guard began to establish a beach patrol system along the Georgia coastline. One specific location that was reported to be the base for the patrolmen was on St. Catherine's Island. The 13-mile-long island was patrolled using 16 horses. However, these horses were untamed and came straight from wild herds. This meant they had never been ridden and were not broken to saddle. So the cavalrymen had to learn how to tame their own mounts before they were able to begin working. Luckily for them, they had two men in their group, one from Oklahoma and the other from Texas, that knew how to break a horse and helped everything get up and running smoothly. These sand pounders were sent out on daily and nightly patrols, but when they weren't working, the men were housed in old renovated slave cabins that had been left behind from the pre-Civil War era. Eventually, there was a barracks built on the southern end of the island which allowed the unit to contact the mainland using radio. Along with the barracks came seven patrol dogs along with a few military jeeps for the mounted beach patrol to use. In 1975, one of the last remnants of the Sand Pounders' time on the island was discovered in one of the old horse stables. They discovered a saddle belonging to one of the unit members, and it was eventually given to a collector. Both the saddle and the wall-mounted rack that it was hanging from ended up being donated by the collector to the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center. The Mounted Beach Patrol was so successful in keeping the coast safe during times of terror that the Chinese military requested their assistance. In 1944, a team of patrol experts was sent over to China so that they could assist the Nationalist Chinese Army in training their soldiers to use dogs and horses in the same way that the Sand Pounders did. In total, 21 enlisted members of the Coast Guard, along with three officers and three vets, were used to make up the team that would end up training between 500 and 600 Nationalist Chinese Army troops. The training was a great success, and it all came in good timing because with World War II coming to an end, the need for the mounted beach patrolmen was beginning to dwindle. By 1944, towards the end of World War II, there seemed to be less of a necessity for the Sand Pounders, and the units started to wane. As the mounted patrolmen no longer needed their mounts, or the dogs that they had been working with out in the field, most of the animals ended up being sold. They were typically sold at public auctions that took place along the coasts. And for the most part, the prices that the horses and dogs went for were pretty broad. Some were sold for very cheap, while others were deemed to be more expensive. For instance, in Tillamook, Oregon, it was reported that 49 horses were sold and the average price for them ended up being about $117 each. To give you a frame of reference, in today's world you won't usually be able to find a horse for less than a grand, and even that's rare. The dogs were a slightly different story. While some of them ended up being sold at auctions like the horses, a lot of them were actually kept. They ended up still being used by the Coast Guard, only now they were on sentry duty instead of working with the Mounted Beach Patrol. A similar job just with fewer horses. At the end of the day though, not a whole lot is known about the Sand Pounders, but after reading an excerpt from a declassified report, it is clear that they enjoyed their job, as rough as it might have been sometimes. The quote came from a man who worked on the beach patrol, and he said, Despite the many difficulties we encounter and overcome, the morale of the men was universally high. Where horses and dogs were used, consideration of the animals was often more important than the comfort of the men. It goes on to describe that no matter the weather, good or bad, their military duties served as a constant reminder of what was happening over on the battlefield. The Sand Pounders are some of the unsung heroes of World War II, and if it hadn't been for them, who knows what would have landed on the shores of the US without anyone knowing about it.
What was your favorite piece of information about the Mounted Beach Patrol that we spoke about? Be sure to let us know in the comments below.